This is NET, National Educational Television. This is PBS, the public broadcasting service. This is PBS. 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 Hello and welcome to This is Public Broadcasting. I'm your host, Captain Rutledge. Now, I want you all out there to think of your favorite PBS scientist. Some of you might be thinking of Carl Sagan. Others, Neil deGrasse Tyson. And the majority are probably thinking of Bill Nye the Science Guy. Today, though, I'd like to take a look at two rather overlooked scientists from the PBS catalog, namely Jacques and Jean-Michel Cousteau. Jacques Cousteau and his son Jean-Michel Cousteau were oceanographers who led teams of expert divers and scientists around the world to document shipwrecks, wildlife, and often underexplored parts of the world's oceans and waterways. Jacques was born in France in 1910 and helped invent the aqualung while serving in the French Navy. Nowadays we refer to the aqualung as scuba gear. He wrote books about his voyages and filmed documentaries with his crew on board his ship, the Calypso. His son, Jean-Michel, was born in 1938 and followed in his father's footsteps as an oceanographer and documentary filmmaker. Both are still highly respected oceanographers and filmmakers, and also personalities to grace the screens of public television. And so we're going to take a look at their public television work today. While doing so, I think I might as well do a little bit of oceanographying myself, if you'll excuse me. Before coming to public television, Jacques Cousteau became a household name in the United States through his series The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau, which aired on commercial stations across the country from 1966 to 1976. In 1977, the follow-up series, The Cousteau Odyssey, premiered on public television. The structure was similar to Undersea World, and apart from the lack of a Rod Serling narration, you really can't tell the difference too much. Each episode followed the Cousteau team and the Calypso around the world, looking at sunken ruins of mankind's past, the amazing creatures that live in Earth's waters, and the effects that humankind has had on nature. I don't know about you, but I can see why Jacques developed scuba. The majority of the series saw the Cousteau team investigating shipwrecks and sunken ruins, including an episode where he takes the Royal Navy veterans by submarine to view the wreck of the HMS Britannic, which capsized after an explosion during the First World War. Despite being at the bottom of the ocean, we see much of the interior is well preserved after 60 years in the Aegean Sea. Heck, the Cousteau divers even find coal by the wreck. Another two-parter sees the Calypso team searching for the lost city of Atlantis. <laughs> That would be awesome, but no. About the only mention of Atlantis in ancient writing came from Plato, who described a great continent that was shattered and sunk in just one day. Of course, fiction is often influenced by fact. Cousteau offers some real-life bases for Plato's Atlantis, spanning the globe from the Pacific Islands, the Canary Islands, and even the island of Crete. Could any one of these sources served as the inspiration of Atlantis? Perhaps. In the end, Plato's story tells how one's own hubris can lead to one's undoing. Well, no sunken cities or shipwrecks in this water, or treasure for that matter. Hold on, is that a silver dollar down there? When Cousteau and the Calypso crew aren't busy hunting down sunken remains of the past, they're usually discovering the wonders of Earth's waters. In a two-parter about the Nile River, the Cousteau team charts the length and breadth of the Nile River from Central Africa to Egypt and the Mediterranean. They come across both humans and animals that depend on the Nile as a lifeline, from swarms of lake flies and great beasts of the African plains, to nomadic tribes and grounded farmers. We also see how the once fertile farmlands surrounding the Nile are threatened by erosion from the sea due to lack of silting caused by damming upriver. In the documentary, The Warm-Blooded Sea, Cousteau uncovers the mystery of oceanic mammals like whales, dolphins, manatees, and sea lions. Cousteau's descriptions of these animals are almost poetic.
The Calypso team observes these creatures in their natural lives, learning about their methods of communication and feeding habits. They might be different from their land-based cousins, but they offer a whole other level of intrigue to life on Earth. Not much chance of finding sharks or whales in here, but I did spy three bluegills, two carp, and five crayfish. Ouch! Six crayfish. Jacques and the Calypso team continued to make films and documentaries covering nearly every square acre of water on Earth. From the 80s to the 90s, the Calypso team filmed Jacques Cousteau's Rediscovery of the World, a series on the Amazon, and two documentaries based in North America. He spoke on behalf of ocean conservation, was elected to the Académie Française, and even received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from U.S. President Ronald Reagan. In 1997, though, Cousteau died of a fatal heart attack. The gauntlets of the Cousteau team leader were then picked up by his son, Jean-Michel Cousteau. Jacques and Jean-Michel had somewhat of a troubled relationship in the past. After Jacques' wife Simone died in 1990, he remarried with his longtime mistress Francine Triplet, worsening his relationship with his son. When Jean-Michel opened a Fiji resort in the Cousteau name in 1996, Jacques filed a court case forcing Jean-Michel to use his own name for the resort. Nonetheless, Jean-Michel followed in his father's footsteps by creating documentary films, including the IMAX documentary Coral Reef Adventure. In 2006, Jean-Michel's documentary series Ocean Adventures premiered on PBS. The 10 episodes featured the Cousteau team traveling around the world covering ocean wildlife and geography, and narrated by such celebrities as Robert Redford, Pierce Brosnan, Delroy Lindo, Anne Hetchy, and Chris North. Although similar in style to the Cousteau Odyssey, there are some differences in style. The Cousteau Odyssey covered more of the undersea wonders and sunken treasures. By the mid-2000s, though, people were becoming aware of the beauty under the ocean, especially since Finding Nemo was released just three years beforehand and was a blockbuster hit. Jean-Michel's ocean adventures chose to focus on mostly unknown and misunderstood ocean wildlife like sharks and dolphins, most of which are facing extinction, hence why Jean-Michel put a lot of focus on the human effects on the ocean environment. When uh, we found out that not only the uh, island is uh, covered with debris which comes from the open ocean, those debris which uh, we discard uh, everywhere uh, is being picked up. These creatures here are doing unbelievably well when you think what they have to put up with. And at the same time, perhaps too much is too much. Water conservation nowadays can be a pretty huge issue, especially since people don't seem to be able to control where their garbage goes. Luckily, there are some organizations out there that help keep the local waters clean. For example, for this lake, there's the Natural Resources District. Of course, the only proper way to control water pollution is to take some parts into your own hands. For example, make sure you dispose of your garbage in proper receptacles and recycle whenever you are able. Then we just might have some clean water for the next few generations. It is undeniable that Jacques and Jean-Michel Cousteau have a great love for ocean life and what lies beneath the waves. Jacques helped open people's eyes to the wonders of Earth's oceans and undersea wildlife. Jean-Michel helped viewers to understand these creatures and the detriment that human society has had on the ocean environment. <laughs> Look at itself. Never go swimming in early spring. Mm. <clears throat> the Cousteau Odyssey is available on video and online, and Jean Michel's Ocean Adventures is available from PBS Shop. You can also donate to the Ocean Future Society to aid in the work that Jacques Cousteau helped to begin and that his son Jean-Michel helped to continue. Now then, time once again for us to <coughs> take a look at the PBS 
Member station. Spotlight. <laughs> so, we've been going all around the country with these member station spotlights, and it's time once again to draw a new name out of the pretty straw hat. So let's see who we get today. Ah, it's the Carolinas with South Carolina Educational Television. In 1957, South Carolina Educational Television started out as an educational closed-circuit television system for classroom purposes in Columbia, South Carolina. By 1960, the system was extended to all 46 counties in South Carolina, and in 1963, the network turned to open-circuit broadcasting for station WNTV Greenville and teamed up with National Educational Television to bring educational programming to homes across South Carolina. Over the years, more stations were added to the network, and in 1970, the network joined the newly formed Public Broadcasting Service. In 1978, the station entered the PBS satellite network, and in 2000, became the first service in the state of South Carolina to broadcast in high definition. SCE-TV produces multiple local programs, including By the River, Live at the Charleston Music Hall, Making It Grow, Palmetto Scene, Take on the South, This Week in South Carolina, and Yoga in Practice, along with national programs like A Chef's Life, Real South, and For Your Home. Today, SCE-TV operates 11 stations in the state of South Carolina. If you're in South Carolina, you can tune in to SCE-TV on these stations, with Create and the SC channel on the Dot .2 channel, ETV World on the Dot .3 channel, and PBS Kids on the Dot .4 channel. Uh, thank you again to everyone for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, feel free to like, subscribe, and share. Leave a comment below, ring the bell, follow on Twitter, and also don't forget to support your local PBS stations. Some more programming related to the works of Jacques and Jean-Michel Cousteau find its way to your television screens. And that about wraps it up. Until next time, I'm Captain Rutledge. Good day. I need a hot bath. La mer Qu'on voit danser Le long du golfe clair A des reflets d'argent la mer des reflets changeants sous la pluie la mer au ciel d'été confond ses blancs moutons 